I tend to find that my patients, they're more concerned about their brain health, their cognitive health, than they are about the nuisance of hearing loss. Um, there's now acres of research that points to the detrimental impact that uh, untreated hearing loss has on, on our cognitive abilities. Um, cognitive abilities, so short-term memory, reaction time, processing speed, uh, general executive function, um, the kind of uh, abilities that we have to help uh, navigate day-to-day uh, -day life. Um, uh, overwhelming repeated studies, large-scale studies, all pointing to the detrimental impact that untreated hearing loss has on cognitive health. Um, when that link is explained in a way that, um, that my patients and my audiences can understand, um, then it becomes a different kind of a motivation because quite often they've started to notice that they're becoming more forgetful. They're starting to notice that at the, um, that just uh, things take, uh, taken more, uh, it's more effort, right? Particularly uh, following conversation in challenging situations, it's just harder. Um, so when that link is made between that nuisance of hearing loss and that, well, uh, this, may, this, this may relate to uh, the fact life's be becoming a little bit more difficult now, um, then it becomes a, a, a different kind of decision. And I tend to find too that um, when, when those links are well understood, um, it tends to motivate people to actually keep their devices in, right? Um, if there's one outtake when I do my live seminars, um, the most common kind of feedback that I get, because a lot of people that come along have, do actually have hearing devices, um, the most common feedback that I get is like, well, now I'm actually wearing them, right? Um, there's cases where, um, you know, in a two hour live seminar that I do, we have a break in the middle, and I've seen people run out to their car, get their hearing aids, come in and, and, and wear them, and they're, they've been consistent wearers since, you know. Um, but um, but to, to, uh, to actually take that step and treat the hearing loss, to get in the habit of wearing them all day, um, it, does, it does require a degree of motivation. And uh, particularly those, um, the, the, the benefits on, on cognition um, what the science is telling us is that that starts to happen quite quickly, right? So uh, a number of my patients, I'll you know, do a follow-up after about six weeks or so, um, and they, they tell me they're less exhausted at the end of the day. Uh, they find that they're, um, that they're becoming gradually less forgetful. Um, and the science supports this. So the, the, what the science is, is, uh, is telling us is that uh, uh, treating hearing loss has a clear protective role on, our, at a minimum, a clear protective role on our cognitive abilities. Um, the science is also telling us, you know, if we're, if we're thinking about dementia risk. A major study uh, done in 2011 uh, really sparked research, research interest into uh, hearing loss and cognition um, and it was, a, it was a, a general study on aging and it was looking at well, what happens uh, to people generally between the ages of 60 and 72 uh, what's happening with the aging process generally um, with aspects that are known to be, known to be associated with aging um, so this study, uh, 2011 study from John, Johns Hopkins University, uh, looked at uh, what happens over a 12 year period. There was 600 people in this study aged around 60. They came in every year to the university for, uh, for two, to, uh, two to three days of intensive uh, testing every year over a 12 year period. And the researchers were looking at uh, male pattern baldness, they were looking at um, the kind of fungus that grows as you get older. Uh, hearing loss was just a very small part of what they were looking at. So 
uh, none of the people, none of these 600 people at the beginning of the study had dementia. That was what part of the criteria. At the end of the study, the most astounding finding that the researchers came across was the very clear links between untreated hearing loss and dementia. Uh, people with a mild hearing loss, which is about a 25% hearing loss. When I graduated university 20 years ago, we didn't really care so much about mild hearing loss. We are most concerned about mild hearing loss in this day and age. Um, those people were twice as likely to have developed dementia during the study period relative to their normal hearing peers. Um, those with a moderate hearing loss, which is 25 to 40 percent hearing loss, most of my patients have a moderate hearing loss. Those people were three times more likely to have developed dementia relative to their normal hearing peers. Those people that had a severe hearing loss, which is around 50 percent or more hearing loss, those people were five times more likely to have developed dementia during the study period relative to their normal hearing peers. Um, quite astounding. It was the most remarkable statistic that came out of, of, of that, uh, that whole body of research and this was a major study on ageing.